So I'm happy to finally be able to welcome Anne Spires. She was scheduled to be with us uh, during the March reading, which proved to be only the second It's About Time monthly wow. uh, reading series that had been canceled in the 30 year history. So I'm very happy to, um, she was willing to come to Ballard, but instead we are, get to have her from her Vashon home where she is Vashon's first poet, inaugural poet laureate. So her little background, Anne Spires is Vashon Island's inaugural, inaugural poet laureate. Her poems appear widely, including anthologies such as Weathered Pages, New Poets of the American West, 500 and Made Poems, and the online In Fire on Her Tongue, A Sense of Place, Northwest Geospatial Poetry. Her chapbooks include Tide Turn, Volcano Blue, and A Wild Taste, Long Crime into Grace, The Herodotus Poems, What Rain Does, and Bunker Trail. Her fine press chapbooks are in private collections and special collections, including the University of Washington Susilo, Stanford, Multnomah County, and British libraries. She earned her MA in Literature and Creative Writing from the University of Washington. She re received residencies at ESPY, is it SB or ESPY? SB is good. <laughs> SB, UW's Whiteley Center and Hedgebrook. She was a founding student editor and cover editor for the Seattle Review. Slated for 2021, Black Heron Press will publish her poetry man manuscript, Back Cut. She co-wrote Walks, Trails, and Parks on Backshawned Island. Visit her webpage, annspires.com. Welcome, Anne. Well, thank you, Peggy. I like that person you just read about. <laughs> She's been busy. <laughs> So I like to read from the back cut manuscript first. Um, it will be put out, as Peggy said, by Black Heron Press, Jerry Gold's Black Heron Press. And the poems sort of balance between the husband speaking and the wife speaking. And it's post World War II, late 40s, early 50s on the Washington State Beach, north of um, say, ocean shores. Husband. Clam gun. Midnight. I button her slicker, my fingers arguing with the last metal hook, winter low tide, a pulse out there in the pitch, razor clam holes pock the beach like a disease. I drag the long nose net behind me, its harness a soft cross strapped across my chest. I work bent forward, pushing into the sand the tube of my clam gun, like a biscuit cutter, pulling up puckets of beach. I fist the clams from the tide's gullet. She holds the lantern high between the surf and me. She places her hand on my shoulder. The seventh wave ramps in, floods the beach, we are jetsam, anchored lightly. The outrush sucks sand from underfoot, unbalancing us. The entire sea returns to fill our boots. Two, I say we're good at what we do, money in my pocket. Even if the cannery man lightens my clam's weight, his gnarly thumb lifting the scales backside. Past 2 a.m., the tavern closed. We take the beach home. Talk to me, I say. She says, I can't hear myself over the ocean. Behind the firs, dawn rising, I say, think of the coffee and cash for real cream. She says, it's the tide coming in. She says, I hear the tide coming in. She says, hurry. Three. She pulls her warmed hands from under the pillow. She touches her fingertips to her nose, the scent brine and clam. My fingers stink with work, my hands softer than seawater, still swollen with cold. Sudden flooding our cabin, my hands don't shake as I unbutton her. I'm on my knees, lighting the fire, matchbox emptying stick after stick striking finally 
on the underbelly of a wet rock. So you can tell this is fully Western Washington at the edge of the old growth. And these people are working hand to mouth in extracting almost the last of the razor clams and the last of the um, and the last of what's left over from big cuts. And this is the wife, Damon Point. All day I am out, walking while there is sky. A hawk dewinging a songbird, an elephant seal rolling his bulk in the swash. A scarred apple bottle, but no message, save me. My love is up beach in his pickup, stop and go, headed this way, beechwood. Yes, I am here, I am here. Snowy owl spotted on a bleached log, north, back dune. This year a Christmas, maybe. Dogs worry the owl. The bird rotates its head. Two. I stand ankle deep in water, rain sheets across the sand, the flow uncovers a grounded ship. I stand on her gunwale, the top side salvaged, damp, damp wicks up my pant legs. I am not alone, a beachcomber meanders the rack line, straightens his walk toward me, suspended in this expanse of light oaring west. Dust covers the dunes like sleep over a naked body. Did you find anything, I ask, the man getting too close. He doesn't answer. Against the rain, I say, you're standing on a shipwreck. He asks, where are you staying? I say, I must get back to my husband. I gesture to the road. Three. At my car, assorted guys stand next to their tire truck. They are busy smoking weed. I'm invisible. To be invisible is an open gift. Thank you. Now I'm going to switch over to Idaho, another great place in the Northwest. The poem I'm going to read comes from a pamphlet, a collection of poems called Vestige. And there's a group on Vashon Island of Poets called Isolati, appropriately named. And they invited um, some of us to join, by, not to join the group, but to submit a poem to the pamphlet. Idaho. Like snakes worthy of Medusa, a tangle of rose rises from the road ditch. Its blossoms full blown are bright butter and sepals dark green. The town is Julieta. I snip four starts from the hard wood, store them in plastic Ziplocs, and dream this rose will root in my garden, deer ignoring it, and rose experts rushing in. Between Pocatello and Wallula Gap, the car heats up in the high desert. All my Julieta die. I am her inadequate friar, an inexpert nurse. God, how I hate tragedy. But I will return to Julieta. She still leaps from the ditch of passing cars, not in a mangy dog way, woof, woof, but an intricate biomass. Thorn, bud, mite, black spot, maybe a, a dead dog, but lovely as Julieta, surviving, sent stopping traffic and seducing road crews. Thank you. And I'd like to end with a poem from Robert Sund. Um, living this way under, not quarantine, but sequestering. Uh, I feel like I'm finally 90 years old and I've reduced my life to a wonderful place, my house and my garden but the horizon is not there anymore. It's just this place. And so Autumn Scott posted this poem on Facebook and it touched my heart. I mean, it gave me glowy hope. 
Um, so this is the title of this by Robert Sund is as though the word blue had been dropped into the water. The running stream is fragrant. On the bank in the shadows, a small yellow flower with sunlight at its feet puts my life together. The little bird that is going to heal me is hopping around in the bushes. So I'd like to end by quoting our masterful leader, our governor, wash your hands. Thank you very much, Peggy. <laughs> Thank you so much, Anne. Thank you for bringing us a message of hope from an even more isolated place in Washington and such beauty. Okay. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much.